Okay. Well, now I'm just going to combine numbers 3, 5, and 6 all together under the general category of oligopolies. So, for an oligopoly, the key features are that there are a few sellers, eh, generally anywhere from 5 to 8, um, another feature is that there is restricted entry and exit. And decisions are made strategically, both decisions on price and decisions on quantity. The net result of all this is that we actually do not draw a graph um, for this kind of firm. Instead, we use game theory. Now, there are two things that oligopolistic firms then do, or can do. They can compete, but they can also collude and form cartels. So what that would mean is that they could act in a cooperative fashion with their competitors in an attempt to earn higher profits for themselves, right? So each firm could say, we agree to charge um, high prices to our customers in an attempt to um, get out of um, or having reduced uh, profits coming from something else. So, um, what we need to do is we need to think about this in a game theoretic sense. And this is going to be our model of how to think strategically. And in this model of how to think strategically, what we need to do is create a playoff matrix. So the, the typical one that we see is known as the prisoner's dilemma. And in the prisoner's dilemma, uh, basically the story here is that a crime has been committed. And the, there are two criminals and each criminal has been found. Um, and they're arrested and they're each put in a separate room. And in the, once they're in that separate room, they're not allowed to talk to each other. So the, you know, the policeman comes in and he starts talking to the um, prisoners and they're trying to get a sense of who committed the crime. Now, they don't have enough evidence to say one did it or the other without talking to them. So the only way that they'll know that so the certain person committed the crime is by the other by some person saying I did it or the other person saying the other person did it. So basically each criminal has one of two options that they could do. They could either not say anything or they could say the other person did it. So we're not going to allow them to say that to um, say, I did it, right? So they, they can't admit themselves having done it. But what they can do is um, stay quiet or they can say the other one did it. If, if they say that the other person did it and the other person doesn't say anything, then that other person is going to get a really big prison sentence. If they both stay quiet, we're going to see that they um, will still get some jail time, but not that much. But what we start to need to do here is that we need to start to create a payoff matrix. Okay, so we're going to have player A, and we're going to have player B. 
B can be silent. And we're going to say that B can betray. Betray means that basically you say the other person did it. A can stay silent. Or A can betray. Say the other person did it. And if they both stay silent, then they each will have to spend one year in jail. If they're both quiet. If they both say the other one did it, then maybe it's the case that they actually both did do it. Um, then they're going to spend two years in jail. And then finally, what if one person stays silent and the other one says the other one did it? Then in this case, um, the person who got told on, player A, is going to have to spend three years in jail. But player B, who wasn't accused of doing anything, he won't have to spend any time in jail, he or she. And it goes the opposite way here. If B is silent, but A says B did it, then B is going to spend, um, sorry, then B is going to spend three years in jail. And if B doesn't say anything and A doesn't say that they themselves did it, then they'll spend zero years in jail. So with this payoff matrix, we need to find the dominant strategy. And the way that you find a dominant strategy is you basically then start telling yourself what would a player do if the other um, if the other uh, player um, made a certain decision. So in this case, if B decided to stay silent, then what would they prefer? Would they prefer to spend um, one year in jail or three years in jail? Well, they probably would prefer to spend, right, it, it, for, for most intents and purposes, uh, they probably would want to just spend um, one year in jail rather than three. Now, what if player B, oh, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let me take that back here. Let me write this out here so it's a little bit clear. If B is silent, a is the one that has a choice. I misspoke, and I was starting to talk about it as B making two choices simultaneously. B is silent. A can either be silent, and if A is silent, they'll spend one year in jail, or they can betray, and then they'll spend zero. If B betrays, A can either be silent, and if A is silent, they would spend three years in jail, or if A betrayed, they would spend ten, two years in jail. So, where do they face an incentive? If B is silent, A will betray, right? Because that's the least jail time. If B betrays, A will also betray, two years less than three. So A's dominant strategy is betray. Betray is always the best thing for them to do. No matter what B decides to do, silent or betray, A always betrays. Now let's look at um, 
let's try to find player B's uh, dominant strategy. If A is silent, then B can either be silent, which would mean they would spend one year in jail, or they can be Trey, which would mean zero years in jail. Or if A betrays, B can either be silent, and if that's the case, then they would spend three years in jail, or betray, in which case they would spend two years in jail. B's dominant strategy is also to betray. Because no matter what A chooses to do, be silent or betray, B is always best off betraying. So in this case, they both betray. So let's just draw this out again very quickly here, just so we have this in a new space here. Then if they both betray, B betrays, A betrays, the intersection, which is occurring right here, is what is called our Nash equilibrium. It is the intersection of the two dominant strategies. And it represents for us a non-cooperative equilibrium. But keep in mind, this is not the best option for them jointly. The cooperative equilibrium is right here. But this is not stable. It's not stable because each player faces an incentive to defect. Because if A is silent and B is silent, A could just say, you know what, I'm just going to tell on the other guy. That way I don't have to spend, um, that way I don't have to spend any time in jail. Sorry, I miswrote that. I don't have to spend any time in jail. And B is going to do the same thing, meaning that this stable equilibrium there continually is an incentive to defect to each side so that in the long run we still are at the Nash equilibrium.